Make space, guys, for King. Make space. I mean, I can understand he just won a medal in the Olympics and everything. He just want to celebrate it. But at the same time, if the kid says, I guess I'm not a fan anymore. Maybe if a white person did that to a black kid. That's racist. The original sin of slavery. The original sin of slavery. Today, Americans are taught when it comes to slavery, America was the worst. The Atlantic slave trade from Africa to the Americas was different from any other type of slavery. The United States didn't inherit slavery from anybody. We created it. American slavery was worse because... The slaves were reduced to, to property. They were chattel property. No other system of slavery did that except uh, American slavery. That's complete nonsense. Wilfred Riley is a political science professor and author of Lies My Liberal Teacher Told Me. Generational slavery, like if you're the son of a slave, you're a slave. That was extraordinarily common. Slavery around the world was slavery. Books like this, Unfinished Nation. Yeah. Slaves in Africa were kept unfree only for a fixed term. No, is the short answer. Uh, most of the slaves taken by these sort of players would be either kept as slaves for their entire life or, more likely, sold to the whites and the Arabs in two years. Liar! Hey, partly thanks to the New York Times 1619 Project, students are taught that America's slavery was unlike anything that existed before. We're the worst society ever. We've done things that no one else has ever done. And sometimes there's nothing wrong with acknowledging your historical mistakes. I mean, I'm black, Irish, a, a bit Native American, at least per the family lore. I mean, those are those are three peoples that have experienced a great deal historically. Nothing wrong with acknowledging that. But it, it's extremely odd to focus only on the negatives of your society and to exaggerate those. Americans are taught that slavers caught people in Africa and shipped them here. But few are taught that most slaves were not shipped to the United States. Between 10.7 million and 12 million slaves from Africa went to the New World. We got a little under 400,000. Under 400,000 out of 10 million. The extreme focus on slavery in the United States, why did that happen? One reason is that a lot of black people survived here. Uh, slavery was harsh, but it's a lot less harsh than clearing the Brazilian jungle. All right, but American blacks are at a disadvantage. They have less capital financial and educational capital. What's the harm in pointing out how abusive white people were? That is true. I still remember in the 1990s, I wanted a white woman and the way they convinced me was like, how many are still married? We black people were married everywhere. We didn't consider it slavery. We worked together, but then we had something called welfare brought by the white people and Planned Parenthood which was created by a white person that hated black people but no <laughs> they want to mess up the system the harm is that pointing out how abusive white people were is not going to get black Americans any more capital. Most of the problems of the modern black community don't have anything to do with historical ethnic conflict 160 years ago. The great society asked not how much, but how good. Riley says most of the problems began when welfare began. I don't like to be right again. <laughs> Maybe I don't articulate my words that perfectly. I'm sorry, I speak four languages with MS boogie boogie in my head. But my point is, it's a rather simple solution. I don't wanna take the money away from you, but don't incentivize people to destroy a family and you reward them for that. I think that's an issue, especially in America, that you can just write a man's name. And if he's not on time to challenge it, you're the freaking father for 18 years. That's stupid. <laughs> Crime in the black community every day. Riley says most of the problems began when welfare began. Crime in the black community. But how good? Riley says most of the problems began when welfare began. 
Crime in the black community, every time I've tried to break this out, increased about 800 percent between, say, 1963 and 1993. Racism didn't increase between 1960 and the modern era. You're looking at the impacts of the great society, the welfare programs. Riley argues it's better to teach the truth that almost every society had slavery. The Aztecs, the Persians, Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, Vikings, and most of all, the Arab world. The Arabs were probably history's premier slave traders. Sometimes they captured poor whites from Slavic countries. The Muslims, many of whom were dark-skinned or even black, took so many blonde slaves out of this region that they gave the world Slav, slave, to the global slave population. Many slaves were forced into harems. Sexual slavery was a very much a part of slavery. Like if your group was defeated in war, the men would probably just be killed or they'd be sold as farmhands. The women would often be sold as harem girls or prostitutes. More than a million Europeans were enslaved, but Muslim slave traders took more people from Africa. The Arabs targeting Africa took out about 17 million people. The British and then the Americans were the rare people who moved to abolish slavery. So yeah, the British Navy, in a story almost no one now knows, sank something like 1,600 slave ships. It freed 150,000 people that were enslaved. At the Everybody stop, hold up, hold up, hold hold up. up. They don't want you to know they saved so many black people. Mm -mm -mm. They want you to know they only helped because they thought they were white people. <laughs> because the Brits objected for moral reasons. Yeah, they'd had enough of it. Saudi Arabia only abolished the slave trade relatively recently. Well, it's another inconvenient fact, right? The Global Slavery Index estimates that even now, although slavery is officially illegal, there are more than 700,000 slaves in Saudi Arabia. Where there were no Westerners, you'd have a lot of slavery for a long time. And you do. American slavery was horrible, but it wasn't unique. Our culture would be healthier if we learned about that. And schools dwelling on America's evils hasn't helped Americans get over them. Gallup polls show that after schools started focusing on oppression, race relations got worse. The idea of generational slavery, the idea of slave trading, none of that was, was unique to America. And another thing, you don't need radicalism to critique the worst excesses of an existing system. All you need is incrementalism and honesty. And honesty got me demonetized. Take his ass to jail! Who? Oh. Yeah, I mean, now you know. What? And I love you. Well, where are you really going? Well, what? I heard what you said at first. I love you. Where are you going? <laughs> are you going home? Yeah. Oh. And now, let's go to UK. What I would say to those people who think they've got away with being involved in the disorder on Tuesday or on Saturday, you absolutely haven't got away with it. We are coming for you. We've got hours of social media footage. We've got hours of CCTV footage. I've got officers working round the clock to identify who you are, where you live, where you work. We are coming for you. We'll be coming for you for the next few days. We'll be coming for you for the next few months. So you might get to next week. You might be sitting with a cup of tea thinking, phew, I've got away with it. Please let me reassure you, you haven't got away with it. We are coming for you. You will feel the full force of the law. We absolutely, I want to reassure the communities that we are absolutely able to cope with what's going on. We have got eight PSUs uh, here in Merseyside today. So what do I mean by a PSU? Each PSU has one inspector, three sergeants and 21 officers. That gives you the scale of the number of officers that we've got ab here able to respond, being supported by colleagues across the, from across the, across the North West. So yes, we are equipped. It are the uh, officers who are getting injured having an impact? Yes, it is, but we absolutely have sufficient resources to, to cope. Ireland, um, Cameron Armstrong, 18 from Belfast, was charged with rioting despite his lawyer stating he had only gone to the area where protests were taking place to have a look. Judge Raffetri said he doesn't have to throw a petrol bomb or a brick to be involved in this order if he's present at a disorder. This is terrible government overreach. You're seeing it now in England where people are getting arrested for tweets. Yeah. Well, England, you know, people talk about Soviet Russia, like how bad uh, Russia is in terms of uh, cracking down on thought police and the cracking down on bad tweets and things like that. I think the statistics are, I think England in the last, I think there's something like 4,000 people have been arrested in England for thought crimes 
where they've said things online that people find to be a, a hateful thing or a problematic thing. And I think it's only 200 in Russia. Oh, wow. Yeah. That says a lot. Yeah. Maybe in Russia they're too scared to do it at all. Could be. Yeah. But the fact that they're comfortable with finding people who've said something that they disagree with and putting them in a fucking cage in England in 2024 is really wild. Yeah. I mean, you got this guy, Tyler, 38 months in prison. For what? He reposted somebody else's comment. Mass deportation now set fire to all the freaking hotels full of ninjas for all I care. If that makes me racist, so be it. And for that, it was like you clearly were inciting super violence on a post that got maybe six likes. And I'm like, I can understand what they mean they have to be careful, but just the idea that you give people so much when on the other side I've seen the same or worse. Should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended? Because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now. You know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. So you haven't sat there and... I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean... Ha, gotcha. You have got me, you have got me. I'm trying to work About that time. through in my head. Yeah, yeah, it took a while, it took a while. It did, it did, yeah. It took a while. The point is, you have the same right as me, but you want to tell me I don't have the same right as you. That's an issue. Like, there he is! Hello, salam alaikum. Uh, my name is Phil Hutchinson and I am the superintendent uh, for Greater Manchester Police based in Oldham. Um, obviously, echo everything that uh, the leader, Rouge, has, uh, has said. Firstly, thank you very much for inviting us and arranging um, the meeting. It's the inaugural meeting. Uh, we're having these now bi monthly, so um, uh, in respect to, to what Rouge has mentioned about some increased tension, obviously, there are a number of issues going on nationally and within Greater Manchester. Um, we're engaging with all um, communities and uh, Greater Manchester Police and UK Policing will um, continue to deal with uh, perpetrators and people who are um, committing crime. I just still remember and people keep telling me when you speak you have to be careful who is standing behind you. And when I see this footage I do think the people behind him actually agree with what he's saying. They're like in the position of power but maybe that's just me. Don't get me wrong, my boss a guitar bong. Put the fire na mi blonde, kush hash purple skunk, Rio, yo, Colombici, jam jam, dur loketa, berdetta, welcome.